the city of angels is black and gold. You are listening to the Heart of LAFC podcast. And now, Joseph Zacker. Greetings, Los Angeles. Welcome to episode 337 of the Heart of LAFC podcast. That's right, we are back. Uh... Everyone is on board. We've got Bam, we've got Tony, we've got Araceli, and of course me, Joseph Zacker, doing our thing. Uh, definitely, before we get into things, I do want to just bring up um, some of the rough news this week, um, some of the important things to say this week. Um, number one, um, I want to pay my, we all want to pay our condolences to to uh, Olaf Suplicki. If you knew him as, L- you knew him as LAOC Olaf, um, he did pass away. Uh, this this week uh, we found out and I got to be honest for me and several of us who went on the Dortmund trip. This is a rough week. Uh, n- no doubt about it. Uh, he was he was a special soul. Um, yeah, he gave us a real lesson in the in the game of football and in the world of supporters as he was a a leader in the supporter movement at Dortmund. Also a avid member of the Kiss Army. Um, and, and ultimately a believer in, in what was LAFC before it really took hold, um, and gave guys like me and several others, a lot of important advice, um, in the lead up to what we're at today. And honestly, it's people like him that believed in us, um, that got us to where we're at. And so, you know, send my love to his family, um, no doubt about it. But, you know, ultimately we're going to miss him, uh, miss him big time. He did come out for MLS Cup. I got a chance to talk to him there. Um, and he would always keep in contact with us, whether it was through Facebook or whatever. He, you know, I'm going to miss him. That's for sure. As as are, as several of us are, of course. Uh, but, yes, a legend definitely uh, has, has passed for the LSC faithful. Um, definitely uh, pay your respects as you, as you, as you feel you can. Um, also, this was the week that we lost Mo. It's the anniversary of that too, so it's kind of a heavy week. I'm not gonna lie. Um, yeah, so I just want to go to that first and, and just say yeah, we miss these guys. There's no doubt, and uh, this this episode is dedicated to them, of course. Um, Bam, did you want to jump in and say anything? Um, although I never got to meet him personally, all the stories I heard about him, all this everything I'd seen on social media, and all the interactions I had him with there. Um, it is a massive loss to not only us over here, but everyone in Germany, all the Dortmund supporters on that too. So to his family and all that, condolences. We He will be missed. And yeah, it's just been a brutal week. Yeah, without a doubt. Without a doubt. Tony, do you want to jump in as well? Um, from what I've met from him, I met him a couple of times in the North End and he seemed like a very cool guy. Um, I didn't, like I said, I didn't get to know him more personally than you, Joseph, of course. But again, it was a very, for just our community, it, it was a big loss, you know, showed us, showed you the ropes, showed 3252 the ropes in Dortmund. Um, and just like, I understand it's like we are an LAFC pod, but of course he was a part of Dortmund for very long long time before us so um yeah they also lost someone there uh so again my condolences to all and then of course with um you know it just with heavy heart as well it just lands on the day of uh most passing as well yeah yeah we got you know kind of the, the the double whammy you could say um in the worst kind of way um but yeah um we go forward, right? And we know that these guys inspire us, and they will still inspire us. I think that's that's ultimately where it's going to be at. Um, you know, you hear the drums, you hear the noise, you hear the madness in the north end, and you got to know that their fingerprints are always going to be there, and that's that's what's important. So, uh, legacy, that's for certain. That's for certain. So, as they would want, we're going to move forward with this thing, get into the football side of it, and uh, yeah, do what do what we do as as the LSU faithful. So let's go from that. All right. Let's just get to some rumors because we did see them. Or happy rumors. I think Tony really wants to jump on this one, but a, a certain player at AC Milan has been, con- you know, 
connected to the club, and apparently the rumors are he's actually said he wants to come here. Would you like to jump on that one, sir? Um, not my team in Serie A, but that was the player I was hoping for. He is the most underrated number nine this uh, generation, uh, as with Suarez and everything, but he's still doing things in high levels. So to fill in the spot of that number nine situation, which you can see we are in desperate, desperate need of, he will fit in properly. Um, again, we do have a deep P spot available. Perfect for him. There is a French connection there as well. So hopefully with all the rumors going and him talking about it, it is true. Yeah, and having the discovery rights kind of helps too. <laughs> so somebody else wants to take a shot at him, he's gonna have to, have to pay us. So uh it's nice. It sounds like mutual interest it could be a good thing. Bam, are you excited about the possibility of Olivier Giroud in the black and gold? Oh, I am definitely, you know, he is who he is. He's got a lot of records that he, he proves who what type of footballer he is. Um but yeah, like if he comes, he comes. If he doesn't, I hope he doesn't. That means he doesn't come to the MLS. Um, or if another team wants him, you know, give us 15, 20 million for the discovery rights. You know, if someone in the MLS really wants him other than us, then they've got to pay for the discovery rights. There it is. So it's a win win for LAFC, no matter what, here. Uh, let's hope it happens. Araceli, it would be pretty much a coup, right, for MLS to get Olivier Giroud to come this way. <laughs> <laughs> Part of me is hoping he does come to MLS, especially LEFC, because as a Chelsea fan, I definitely enjoyed him when he was playing with Chelsea. And I, I don't know, just to see him come here would be really great. But I do, I, I don't know, I'm curious about it too, because just kind of the past signings that we had with Gareth Bale and Chiellini, yes, they've proven effective for the squad, but. I, I kind of want to see LEFC go after talent that will be with the squad for the long term, not just a two-year contract, if we're assuming that's what the what the deal might be. I don't know. If you want to be effective for one month and get an end of a Palacios cross in an MLS Cup final, I'm perfectly fine for a rent-a-player. I'll take it. Gets us a ring. We move on, right? I'm okay with that if it gets us the win. Um competitively to me that's it's about the football at the end of the day if this guy can can help us and get us across the line we need those guys right now i mean you just look at that whole combination of that goal none of them are here <laughs> and we're not looking like we got anybody that's capable of it at the moment so i'll take my chances I think that's where my head's at right now. Oh, no, yeah, absolutely. And I don't away. think there's <laughs> any real argument against that. I'm just thinking kind of in the long-term sense, but that, yeah. that's just my hot take. <laughs> oh, at the, the long-term sense is probably the the, the Mueller conversation, right? Uh, which, Araceli, we're going to talk about in a little bit, but that seems like a player that could be one for us for a while, right, if it all works itself out. It could potentially be, and after seeing what I saw yesterday and even this morning from training, it, it could be leading that way a, a lot quicker than we anticipated. Right, right, and at the same time, mm -hmm. we see Ordas suiting up for El Salvador and and others doing. I mean, the youngster. We do have a lot of youngsters, a lot of project players. Mm -hmm. um, I, I can think of a few guys that would really benefit greatly from a guy like Giroud in training. Including Mueller. Um, ah, you know, we'll, we'll see what happens. I just know that we've got plenty of space, plenty of cap space as well um, to, to play ball with this. So let's hope we need, we need a number nine, man, desperately, desperately. And maybe, a maybe an actual playmaker after watching this game against, against Minnesota, like maybe someone that can control some tempo here. Just, just maybe, yeah, it's time, man. I, I I think this summer better be a spending month or a spending summer, a big spending summer for us, because otherwise I think we're in trouble. I think you guys would agree with that. Bam's nodding his head. You want to jump in, man? A hundred percent. Just we need although we've got a lot of lot of good young talent, we need that old head in there to not only just to be 
another voice on the pitch, but especially in training. Like you, you saw with Chiellini, yes, he played a lot of games for us, but what he was doing in the trainings, talking to the young defenders, teaching them better and all that, that's just experience that you can't get anywhere else. So having someone like Drew come in that can do that with these young attackers would be amazing. That's the key. That's the key. We just it, It's only going to help. It's only going to help. Is he going to stay healthy? Well, manage the minutes. Make it happen. Uh, but yeah, let's, just hope we, let's hope we nab him. That's for sure. Bring someone else to, to, to deliver a few passes his way. So I think that's what we're going to do anyway. Let's hope for it. All right. With that being said, of, of course, the happy news also was with LAFC2 getting a huge win. Ersula, do you want to jump into that one right now before we get into the doldrums? Let's get the happy stuff first. Um, you want to jump in on it? Sure. Let's go ahead and get straight into it. All right. Well, as most of you already know, LAFC2 won their home opener against Minnesota United 2 uh, in a stunning 4-1 to win. Um, it started off with Leonardo Flores doing what Flores does best, continuing his uh, goal scoring from last season, where he took advantage of Alex Smear's uh, error that Alec came out of the goal too far, trying to deny Flores, giving him the perfect opportunity and basically a wide open net. So, and thankfully, you know, he finished in the 13th minute, gave LEFC to the lead. Um, for most of the first half, it was just kind of a little bit of sparring, you know, trying to get the run of the game the and seeing of how the players, you know, gel well. Of course, you know, this being the first match and without any preseason training to go off of, this was kind of our very first look at the team as a whole. But thankfully, it all pays off come the second half with Luis uh, Mueller scoring a brace just four minutes apart from each other in the 56th minute and the 60th minute, giving LEFC2 that much-needed cushion because shortly after, Minnesota was able to pull back a goal. But um, in the 73rd minute, Matt Evans scores a, a low drive to solidify the win for the team, giving them their first victory of the season, which I am very glad to announce considering what last season looked like. Um, <laughs> but this win, it just only elevated the team, especially this week where they topped the power rankings and the Western Conference standings. They absolutely crushed it. Uh, Mueller won player of the match week honors. And now next up, um, LEFC 2 will host uh, Dynamo 2 this Sunday at 1 o'clock Pacific time. If you're unable to attend the match, it will be streamed on Apple TV. And some quick additional notes on it following the match as well. Mueller and Flores were both spotted in first team training yesterday and this morning so there could be a potential call up in the near future i don't know it could just be a simple invite or maybe sharundalo is testing them out who knows but to see them already getting um some training time this early uh, i'm gonna take that as a very good sign also uh luca bambino got called up to the u19s this past weekend so Again, looking at the talent that this squad has, it, it's very it, it, there's a lot of potential with it. I I do like this mindset of the player the player features well on the weekend, and then gets invited to the main team's training afterward. That's kind of cool, you know. If that may be something that we're looking at here, like hey, you know what? If you've shown it, let's see what you do against the big boys. And if you look natural there, well, we know who to go to now. If Ordaz is playing for El Salvador, which he did today. They play this weekend as well, right? Am I they wrong do. in that? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So there's an opening right there where one of these kids could get get to wear a shirt for the day, right? Or at least get get a chance to be at the stadium, you know, because you're not sure who gets called up for the day and who's going to watch from the the box, right? So we'll see what happens. Uh, but definitely, there's an opening. <laughs> there is an opening there. So we'll see what see what happens. But it is nice to have a a Mueller that can score. 
for us. It's a cool vibe. The jerseys look good on the field as well. I'm going to throw that out there too. Um, and yeah, I mean, you, you watched it. And what was your thoughts about Mueller's play overall? I know we got the brace, but outside of that, what, what could you tell us about the way he was operating out there? I will be very honest. I do need to go back and kind of review his play a bit closer because I was uh, monitoring other games at the same time. But based on the goals and just kind of the glimpses I was able to get, he seemed to be very fast on the field. He got into uh, the small, you know, the small spots and was able to create opportunities. Um, plus on the, I believe it was with Matt Evans, he did get the assist for that goal. So to see his productivity on the field was um, very refreshing. It's one heck of a professional debut, that's for sure. That's for sure. Good on him. Good on Luis Muller. Um, we'll, we'll hope to see him move up soon, especially seeing how things are looking with the top side. So awesome. There we go. All right, let's jump right over to it. Now that we've got some positive news, I needed some good vibes before we talked about this game against Minnesota. Now we'll talk about Minnesota United against well what was lafc in name i'm not sure i could say the same in style of play because that was a weird vibe on that game but let's get into it all right we head up to minnesota you obviously know the score the lineups same for us no change there uh no shock uh at the same time the other side uh minnesota they play the four two three one St. Clair was, of course, in goal. Boxall, Tapias is your center backs. Taylor and uh, Paddleford were your outside backs. Dotson and Trapp were your defensive midfielders. Lode, of course, was the playmaker with uh, Songbin and Clark as your outside mids. Of course, Pookie as the target man up front, and Pookie as the pest, let's be honest, this entire game. Uh, that was their setup. That's what they're looking at. Very physical. We learned that very quickly, how they play. Um, and, and getting to it. I mean, th th they have been, and we did give you guys the warning, one of the most informed teams in the league. They've looked legit in every game they've played in. There hasn't been one where they haven't looked good. They've looked good. Result or not, they've looked good. So no shock. Uh, we were in for a long day. Um, we were hoping for better, but man, this, this one got, this one got funky quick. I'll throw it over to you, Tony. Highlight time, man. Are you ready for it? What highlights? <laughs> okay, low lights. We'll just call them low that. lights. Yes. Um, so first half, let's just go out and say it again. The recurring trend that's been plaguing us for years upon years, especially last year, missed opportunities by many players, especially our our new highest play paid player, Dini. Um, with the wide open net, but in the 17th minute, oh, I have to say this off a half across into the box. Rio heads tries to clear the ball, heads it into the center of the box, it lands oh, right in front of Robin Lode, and Lode just puts it in really easily. Um, and that's how we start off the game. And it's just we were kind of on the back foot the whole time, like. It wasn't, there was no rhythm. There was more playing catch up throughout the whole game with Minnesota. Again, Minnesota has been doing decently for the last couple of games. And we just, ever since Seattle, just haven't found our footing after that. Yeah. I mean, after giving up that goal, and of course, Mario, we've been praising him in the lead up to this. It's how well he has been playing, how well he's been leading. That was a boneheaded move. I mean, I, I don't have any other way to say it, but you headed it right back into your danger area. I, I Horrible situation. Um, and they, they punished us. You know, we got burned. But after that, I can't think of many chances in this game, and especially in the first half, where I really felt we were threatening much of anything in this. It might be the most boring half I've ever seen from LASC after that 16th minute, because I really did not feel any inspiration of that. This is going to come back. This is... We'll get it. This is this is a, no at no point did I really feel like oh okay now's the moment. No, no, it was just going through the motions, watching the game go back and forth. Got chippy. Okay, that's great. But at no point was anybody taking charge in this game, taking lead in this game, being the leader on this team. It was just going through the motions, passing the ball, cycling when you needed to. Okay, that's great. Very predictable. But no deadly pass. No chance taking, I would say. 
it was for, very much looking like they were going through the motions. Am I am I wrong in that, ma'am? Hundred percent. That's that's what it felt like. Like, yes, we copped an early goal. Um, then when it's taking a chippy, I'm like, yes, this is going to turn us around. You know, we're gonna get chippy get into the face. Um, I even tweeted out going, I did not expect this game to finish eleven v eleven. No, when no. Get chippy, I like looking at the five earlier games that all had red cards, and then the last game of the night had a red card too. I can't remember the last time where six of the twelve Saturday games end up with a red card. So I thought this could be this is going to keep going. You know they're going to keep pulling these cards, but no, it just we got chippy and then we got scared. That's it. It's just a little bit intimidated, and again, uh, lack of passion, man. I don't. I hate to say it. I'm not that kind of guy, but it felt like a practice game at times. Like I don't know. There's just no risk taking. That, that it killed me on that one. Um, Tony, your thoughts? First half, just going through the motions. It was just we weren't, we didn't show up, is the best way to say. It. Like, this was a not, we don't have must win games, but this was a must win game after the performance that we did against Kansas City. Um, you know, we can say the snow games, we'll also just call it for a quick thing against uh, Real Salt Lake. Like, I get again. That was a fluke. It happens. Whatever we move on, we push forward. But now it's just getting to the point where I I felt that was a must win game just to turn it around, it, just because of like the momentum after that. Because it's just I don't know what happened after the snow game. Because it's just we haven't been ourselves. Like the way we opened up the season to now is not the same team. It, it's off. There's there's there definitely was something off, and I, I think a lot of that also uh, also was pressure on Boanga now that he has to lead this team because he's the guy looked to to lead this thing. You get that paycheck. That's what happens. And he's right. He's reminding me of of that the Boanga we got that couldn't get it across the line and then finally broke through against Portland. Right? Remember that? Kind of getting those vibes. It's kind of overhashing it a lot. Um, holding the ball a little longer than he normally does. Just, it's not quite there. Um, yeah, it's, it's, it's rough. Um, second half, of course, didn't get any better. Um, some back and forth, but again, I can't think of any moment where it was like, okay, here it is. We found ourselves. This is, this is where it's going to be. And, you know, these games, you're like, oh, that moment where we could have had it. I can't think of that moment where we could have had it. Am I wrong in that band as well? Like, Second half too, same thing. Yeah, hundred percent. It. It's I don't know what it is, but whatever bad juju we've done, whichever ladder we've walked under, how many black cats cats we've ran over, we just can't score. It's yeah. like the snow game froze our scoring. I see it. The our, our goals are stuck in the snow. You know, we haven't defrosted them. We need to throw them out. Thought maybe getting back to sunny California might do that, but it hasn't. And I don't know what we can do. Yeah, and we're not dictating the play. That's for sure. I know we had more possession in this game, but sideways passing, right? There's nothing. It was, it was cycling. You know, that's cool. All right. Maintaining possession. But there was no deadly run, no give and go. No no crazy pass to get it, get it dangerous. No dangerous. Not, not putting it in dangerous areas. It just wasn't there. It wasn't there on the day. And, of course... They kind of put us out of our misery in the 88th minute, right, Tony? Yeah, in the 88th minute, it was like a bonehead def defensive play, just kind of leaving the the player like not like kind of like not marked, but marked is the best way, like very lazy marking. And he just gets it past uh, Larice, and just it it just it was just game over at that point. It was just call it, move on, and we have to focus on the next game. And what sucks about this the most is um, I, I have to bring him up as well. Oliveira had a nice opportunity chance, and he just passed it to the keeper. Boanga had an opportunity, didn't do anything. Compost was is, is getting burned right now. Um, I think teams have kind of figured him out. Luckily, we won't have him next game. Uh, we'll explain why when we break down the game against Nashville. But again, we have to right the ship now against Nashville moving forward because we have this game 
Colorado and then the Derby. So if we are still in this possession of this trend going into that, I have very, I'm very fearful what's going to happen. No, I'm not fearful. Something's got to give, right? Something has to happen here. It's got to change or we already know what's going to happen. I'm not fearful of it. I know what's going to happen. You play like this against those guys. They're not the same team they were last year. I know it's looking way ahead, but sorry, they're way more competitive now. Uh, it's it's legit. It's it's us right now. We got to worry about us. Now, I'm not taking anything away from Minnesota. I got to be honest. Like We tend to do that as LAFC fans as we kind of underwrite the performance of other sides. We do it a lot. It's just us, man. We're terrible. Minnesota was good. I don't, don't, don't put that away. You know, they played their game that they've played all season so far. This is what they do. They frustrate the hell out of you. They're pets. Look at what Pookie does. This is what they do. And Langwani scoring late. I'm pretty sure. So you can agree when you saw Langwani go in the game, you're kind of like, well, yeah, here comes the second one. Cause guess what? That's what he's done this year. He comes in super sub and he kills teams off. He's done it. He's found his way back. They did it against Columbus. This is what they do. Typical play from this side uh, this season. Right, Ursula? No, absolutely right. And I agree with all three of you that looking at the game, it it was just lack of motivation. There, There was definitely something missing. And normally I'd be the one to kind of have the hot take of, oh, well, I'd rather have them lose now than in September when it really matters. But considering the last couple of games, you do have to start looking at it differently of, okay, what exactly is going on? Where, you know, where is this lack of motivation coming from? Is there issues within the team? Is the new players not gelling well? Is there still some... Um, animosity because of what's happening with Bella. You, you, there, there's all different types of factors, but regardless, at the end of the day, the team needs just needs to simply figure it out, or yeah. else they're going to be uh, in the, big trouble. The other thing we might have to think about is our approach to the game itself. You know, uh, it, after a while, people figure you out, figure out what you do, how you approach it. There was a time where we were that we were an ultra possession team where we would just pummel you to death, chance it, chance it, chance it. We waste a bunch, but that's what we do. And then we converted to this counterattacking side that will goes, well, we'll get you in the transition. That's fine. But we've always had the ability to have both speeds and just pick and choose when we want to change speeds. I don't see any change of speed in this side. It's the same thing over and over. And guess what? It's been figured out. So something new, ha- something's got to give. I think tactically, man, manpower wise, something's got to give because it's not, it's just not looking right. That's for sure. Anything else you want to add there, Bam? No, nope, like, 100%. Ready to move you got, on. It, everyone's now, you know, it, as you said, you've got to give them props. They've done well. They're doing what they've got to do. Um, I can see them going deep, especially if they keep playing the way they're playing. They don't get stuck down with injuries. But yeah, Minnesota are a team to keep an eye out in to see how they go for the rest of the season because I think they're going to do quite well. Yeah, they look legit, and you know they've got a new manager now. This was his first win in charge, if you can believe that. Uh, they've got a different look to the way they're approaching this game, and that's fine. Um, they've brought in players that will get them where they need to go and some of their injured players are now coming back we saw one feature late for them so they're only getting better at this point so that's one thing we're going to chase we already know we're chasing them um and you got to be better than that if you're going to do anything in this league real talk all right so that's how the game went we lost two nothing and we got to lick our wounds and move on. I see you got about 15 comments. I think we're going to go to you guys right now. Join the conversation if you can. We are definitely going to throw this up to you before we get into community news. All right. First one on, it's Jibble. Says yo to everybody. Burke is on as well. Good seeing you here, Burke. Dave Gomez checking in. Love it. Um, <laughs> I think he says Olivera, please. Yeah, Olivera had a rough one. I ain't gonna lie. Um, wasteful, wasteful, wasteful. 
Uh, Jose Bernal is on here. Says, Hola, brothers from the BA family. See you, brother. Falcon in the mix says, What's good, fam? Like it, like it. A little man trash can in the mix, too. Dave Gomez says, We must end the scoring drought this weekend, and he will put a brace. I predict, I hope, and I pray. I hope and pray. This is the this is the break. Nice thing is when we do play at home, we do play a lot better at home. Um, it won't be 29 degrees or whatever the weather was. I'm not gonna blame the weather, but yeah, being at home is much nicer. That's for sure. Uh, but yeah, there's a lot going on. That's for sure. Uh, Jose Bernal says, "Why don't they pass the ball? Pass effectively. Pass into the dangerous areas. How about run off the ball? That would be nice." Uh, Jose Bernal says, why they are selfish in play, why they are about the score. They need to pass the ball. Looks like they don't want to make the pass right. Overdoing it a bit as an individual. Uh, we saw a lot of that where, okay, they close in on you. Now what are you going to do? And you got predictable with it. The easiest thing in the world to defend is this one-on-one stuff because it never really is one-on-one. The trailer always comes in and takes care of business and cleans up the mess. That's just how the game's played. Uh, Jose Bernal says, and finish the play, guy." Got a teammate, better positioning. Yeah, got to do it. Uh, David Day says Carlos Vela. Well, I will say this. Yes, would nice to be nice to have his leadership right now. That is something that is definitely missing at the moment. Um, would he affect a lot on the field right now after spending so much time off? I'm not so sure, uh, but it can't get any worse, right? I, I think that's where we're at. It's just, do you want to overspend for a player in this moment where you're feeling kind of like, oh, I don't know about this side, right? Questioning things on a scoring drought. It's not a forever drought. It's a three-game drought, something we're not that used to. Uh, but still, I get the Vela thing right now. I do. Uh, leadership would be nice. Uh, Charlie Candle. He says, thumbs up in the chat if you want Vela back, I think is what he's going for. So. Definitely do that, guys. If you'd like, I'm thumb sideways. I mean, yeah, we want we want him back, but prices. If it's a DP, eh, I don't know about that. So yeah, exactly. DP price, no. Other funky ways to get the money across the line. Oh yeah, two thumbs up, man. It's just you don't want to kill your chances in the summer either. All right. Otherwise, you know, the best we could possibly do is what we did last year, right? If you just bring Vel in. The best you're going to do is what you did last year. As far as I'm concerned, it's not enough, right? Something more has to be here. Something has to give. You need more. Spend the money, LAFC. Billion dollar club. It's time to spend some money. Let's go. And there's that, right? So there are the comments right now from everybody. Thank you all. I know there's going to be a few more popping. Definitely do it. We're going to catch you guys towards the end of the episode as well. Get your get your thoughts on the on the next match this weekend because I know I'm going to see a lot of you, a lot of you at the game. Uh, all right, let's look for it. We've got community news. Tony, you have the floor, sir. So with community club and community news, of course, um, 3252 membership is still up and running so if you haven't signed up this is the perfect opportunity time remember there is limited not slots or spots but limited availability for this of always once it's closed it's closed it also helps um supporter groups with their numbers and also if when and we have to go to away days ticket uh, for tickets for away days it's a big helpful as well to get help to know that you're a 3250 member so we can get you with the ticket that we need as well as of course the new scarf pin and some other goodies depending on the different tiers um of course the uh 2024 art show with black army aim and 3252 is on june 30th um I, as i'll go through the spiel once more again showcase how you feel your culture is represented in the city of los angeles los angeles is a melting pot of culture whether whether or not you were born born and raised here, the city makes you feel like you belong. Painting, sculptures, pho photography, etc., all mediums welcome and accepted. Deadline submission is June 23rd. And to reach out for uh, submissions or anything, it will be at bagivesback at gmail.com. And as well as, so there's a couple things with the game, of course, game, the new game, uh, the game, being at home, tailgates are going to be a must. So go hang out with most of all the supporter groups, see if you can fit in or just get involved with any of them. But 
Um, there are a couple things that are happening that day. Um, one is rock your socks for uh, for for World Down Syndrome Day, which is today. Um, so wear your crazy socks. I had a couple ones on for today. Um, but we're also going to be wearing them during the game. So if you have a couple crazy socks, just wear them during the game. Uh, probably cuff up my pa- my sh- uh, my uh, my pants for the game so we can show them off and stuff like that. So just support, you know, Down syndrome because it's close to close to BA's heart, but also a lot of people in the world as well is affected by this. Um, as well as um, during the tailgate, um, spring extravaganza uh Quervo's always put this out every year before easter um sometimes during the easter weekend uh easter weekend of course is next week but um they are going to do the easter bunny will be there an egg hunt and special prizes which of course is hosted by the Quervos. and the last thing on the agenda it, or one of the last things on the agenda is um uh d9u is doing a drive for the unite for women inviting our 3252 and LAC community in honor of Women's History Month. They're at, and they're asking for a feminine product drive to benefit East Los Angeles Women's Centers. What they're looking for are pads, tampons, penny liners, toothbrushes, menstruation cups, uh, sanitary wipes, deodorant, and period underwear. Uh, so if you can reach out, uh, D9U has more information on their link, and any of these donations will be very uh, appreciative because of course there are some women who can't afford these or can't get a hold of most of these items and the last one is for aim um this next well this coming wednesday march 27th uh loteria night uh from 5 30 to 8 30 with a at a at a 4011 City Terrence Drive, Los Angeles, California. Uh, info if you have to RSVP at info at orgala.wine. So it's a pretty much, I believe, a benefit for AIM and just to hang out. So um, if you can do that on Wednesday, play some Monteria, it'll be fun. And that is all for community news. Busy, busy time for the faithful. That is for certain. Thank you, Tony. It's a long list of things. Um, what we know for certain. Come on out, support the cause. If you've got artwork, artwork that you're thinking about submitting, don't hesitate. Do not hesitate. It will go to a good place. Athletes in the making, in the making, is amazing, and what they do for this community, it's only going to go to a good place. Uh, that's for sure. And also, the art show looks really cool. The presentation of the art, it, it's it's properly done. That's for certain. So please make your donations. You heard about the list of donations needed. Let's go for it, guys. Support the cause. Support the community. All right. So we are going to move on forward. Thank you, Araceli, for the LAFC T News. Normally we'd do this right now, but, man, we needed some bright, bright, hopeful stuff. Um, I know you can't stay on for the whole night. So as we transition out from here, it might be a good time for you. Um, thank you once again. I know you got a lot of reports to write, and it's going to be crazy. So we're going to definitely let you escape right now, okay? Uh, I have... I definitely need to catch up on some sleep as well as work because, as you guys know, it's been a very long week in the world of Next Pro, let alone MLS. So as much as I want to stay on here and talk about Nashville, I'm going to have to dip out early. I'll definitely catch you guys next week. You got it. Thank you, Araceli. (laughs) Amazing as always. Hey, see ya. There she goes. Again, she, she, she's she, got a lot on her plate. That's for sure. Again, Open Cup stuff she's got to cover tonight. MLS 2 is, is or MLS Next is flying. So um, all good. And, of course, she catches us from Kansas City uh, or just outside Kansas City, I'll say. Uh, so it's a late night. That's for sure. All right. Let's move it on forward. Before we get into the match against Nashville, we do, of course, have our tradition of the Black and Gold Vinyl Club Minute. Uh, This one's going to take a different vibe, though. We've never featured this band before, amazingly enough. They're going, I'm thinking, all the way back. I don't think we've ever featured them, which is pretty amazing. Uh, I know Tony's looking back. You haven't. But basically, we wanted to, again, again, dedicate this episode to Olaf. and one of those things that we want to do is talk about, of course, is his love for KISS. Um, he was a member of the KISS Army, a high member in the KISS Army um, in Germany. 
uh, traveled all over to see these guys. Uh, so we wanted to we wanted to mention a couple albums um, that we know he would love. Uh, and so that is our that is our way. This episode for the Black and Gold Vinyl Club Minute. One episode, one album that I really like, of course, is Destroyer from 1976. Uh, it's got Detroit Rock City on it, which is freaking awesome. Um, and then Dynasty, 1979. Man, they made a lot of albums, guys. It was kind of like two per year with Kiss back then. Um, but Dynasty came up came up to me as a good one as well, especially the name Dynasty. Mm-hmm. Um, and the song I Was Made for Loving You is on there. So yep. talking about hits. Mm-hmm. Yep, yep, yep. Mm-hmm. Uh, which is freaking amazing. Uh, so those were the two albums that kind of featured for me. I know these guys might have a couple others. You guys want to throw some out there too? Because ah, man, there's so many good albums from from Kiss. <laughs> you, um, you can't really throw any more out there. Like you know, a- every album has a good song on there that we all know. So you can't mm-hmm. say this album's better than this album. So it's just in general. Yeah, it was one of those things. I was trying to pick out you know like album one that really stood out at all the hits. No, it was like two or three, two or three, two or three in each album so it's mm-hmm. like hey i like these two though a lot so <laughs> yeah and we know we know all off wood too so uh yeah. all love brother uh rest in peace man uh we'll definitely listen to some kiss this week that's for sure and that if, is our final club minute yes tony i was gonna say or if you can afford it and whenever they do it they are doing a ai kind of holographic version of their t- of their concert sooner or later where they're making them more theatrical, but it fits Kiss's theme of they're about the music, but they are about the theatrics. Let's be honest. It's the pyro, man. It's the show, <laughs> right? It's, it's, it's the glam. It's, it's, it's never just about the music. I mean, that's not Kiss, man. It's, it's, it's definitely the feature, the presentation um, more than anything else. I mean, that's what they're known for. Right, no doubt. So for them being you know, throwing this AI thing out there and doing a whole different look, I might throw some people off, but dude, that sounds typical kiss to me. I no no shock there, that's for sure. We'll see what they do with this thing. I bet you I bet you it turns out pretty good. That's for sure. So again, love you, Olaf. We miss you. And we will move on to the the match itself. Here we go. All right. Preview. LSC versus Nashville. Yes, a chance. A chance to to correct ourselves. Uh, to find ourselves at home against a team that's had a very, very busy schedule in the lead up, playing both league matches and CONCACAF Champions League. You remember that, guys? I think we're not playing them this year. Yeah, that one. Um, didn't do so well in that one, of course, and, and they ran into the buzzsaw that is Miami when Miami is healthy. Um, and and you know, drew at home, but lost on the road to enter. Um, and then credit to Nashville came back only a few days after losing well, three days after losing the Inter, got a big win against Charlotte at home with a modified lineup because again, guys get tired. And so they're coming off of a big win. They've got momentum from this. You would think they wouldn't because Inter, but no, uh, you know, they got an important win, a character win. Um, and now they come to our house looking at it at a team that's honestly licking its wounds right now. Well, they're not. Um, yeah, it sucks getting knocked out of the Champions League, but they're not done. They're not close to done. They're moving forward. So this is what we got to deal with. Now, that Nashville match, um, I did get to see a bit of it. Bam. Uh, your thoughts on that one? And what do you what do you expect to see from these guys? Um, I expect to see them do what they did last game against Charlotte. You know, they came out firing. Um, were two 0 up quite within the forty minutes. Um, Charlotte came back and scored in injury time in the first half, and Charlotte were peppering them. But Nashville just stood tight. Nashville had a point to prove that we're not going to let through easy goals like they did with um, into Miami, but. For me, it's going to be a quite difficult game. Like they are missing two players uh, through injury. They're obviously missing uh, Randall Lille, who's been out all season from a hip injury he got last year, and they are missing Walker Zoom at the moment. You know, that is a massive loss for them. But they're showing that although it was a massive loss, we can still grind out and we can still get that defensive win. Yeah, I mean they they held on for dear life in this game. They got the goals they needed. Um, the surge goal, man, they, <laughs> great header. 
uh, really atrocious defending, how to be honest. Uh, but at the end of it, Nashville did run out of gas in this game. There, there's no question that the, you know, the legs caught up with them for playing the midweek match, and, and they had to hold on for dear life to get past Charlotte. Charlotte's not had a great year so far, but they're not like they're winless. They do have a win this year. Um, but featuring the players that they had, I mean, Mukhtar was looking like Mukhtar, right? I mean, he's looking himself again uh, under the circumstances. Surridge looks real. Boyd looks legit. Um, I look at this side. Willis is who he is. I expect him to be solid against us. The character players are there, you know. Um, again, missing some feature guys, but they've got grinders. That's for sure. It's not going to be easy a game for us. A very hard game is what I'm expecting, um, and nothing guaranteed. That's for sure. How do they line up? Well, the last two matches look pretty much the same, right? 4-2-3-1. Um, I'll feature more of the lineup against Miami because I think that's what it's going to look like more anyway. Uh, they had Willis and goal, uh, McNaughton and Lovitz as their center backs, Moore and Washington as their outside backs. Godoy and Davis played as their defensive midfielders. Well, Mukhtar, of course, was the creator in the central midfield. Uh, Mule and Schaffelberg were your outside midfielders, and of course, Boyd was up top in this game again. Will Boyd shift and have Surridge stay up top this time? We shall see. That is an option that they have. If you're going to see something switch, it would be those guys coming in, and then Schaffelberg would not. But we'll see. We'll see. They have options. I look to you again, Bam. You know, looking at the two possible lineups, what do you think they're going to go with? Um, that's really tough. Like, yes, I had that. The the normal four two three one against uh, Miami, but the I guess Charlotte they're more of a four four two, and I do expect that to be more of a um of what they'll do because that was a winning recipe. So I don't see them changing that so this quick. So I do expect them to go more of the lineup against Charlotte than they do with us. In, in that case, then you're looking at at Surge and Mukhtar to drop uh, at least push high. Basically, yeah, and then Boyd would drop in outside midfielder, right? Pretty much where it's going to play. <laughs> that is hilarious. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I, I I I could see that happening again. These guys shift. They they have they have the ability to. So it's not going to be easy for us. This is no guarantees for LAC. As good as we could possibly play, this team is is one of those teams that could hurt us. That's for sure. We got to get. Got to get it together before this game happens. That is for sure. Uh, Tony, your well, thoughts no, no. on this thing coming up? Oh, yes. Bam. Yeah. No, no that though. You got to look at it too is to Nashville playing against us is a cup final to them. A lot of teams that always come against us, this is the game that they've really got to step up for. Um, yes, they're in the East, but they have played us quite a lot and they do know how dangerous we are so they've got to really step up for this game yeah simple as that and again the only loss we're talking about was a CONCACAF Champions Cup match right I mean that was if you're looking at recent history so you know they've got what results against well draws mostly right um, they did draw our neighbors right in their house um, they drew Colorado on the road yeah We'll see what happens. It's going to be tough. I think the bigger story is going to be what are we going to do? This time it is really about us. What are we going to do? How are we going to respond? What's the lineup going to look like? We know for sure. And I go to you, Tony, who's out for this game? Um, we know for a fact that Compost is not playing for us for the game. He is going to believe to the under 23 side. So he is out for that. And you already know the slot, who's going to slot in of the uh, switching of players. So mm -hmm. we and should... Ardas featuring. Yes. Mm -hmm. Ardas. Ardas. So this is why I believe also Mueller is maybe being called up because of that. That may be bad. Or, yeah, it'd be tough. I mean, there's other guys that haven't been dressing too that could just get to dress for this one. But mm -hmm. the, the tough thing is, is, is what's it going to look like? So back line, no shock. I don't think it's going to be a big shock here, except, mm -hmm. yeah, Mario Long, your center backs. 
Mm -hmm. Why would it be any different? Uh, left back, right back is the story, of course. Campos being out, Holling says going to have to shift to his old position at left back. I don't. Are you guys agreeing with that one? Yeah, we're going to see. All right, and of course, who goes to right back then? Palencia. Yeah, no shock, right? <laughs> what else they're going to do? I, I don't see it any other way. Um, midfield and of course forward situation. Push has to shove here, man. Something's got to be different this week. I can't. Oh man, is it really going to be the same thing? I, I, I'm going to be really surprised. I honestly did think when Bogu shifted back in the midfield in the game against Minnesota, there was a little bit better. At least it looked a little bit better to me when he dropped a bit, you know, low and let the kid come in. Um, which I'll, I'll throw it to you, Bam. First, who are your three in the midfield for this game? For me, three in the midfield. I'm going to do something. Strange, Ilya, Tillman, Bogus. I'm with you on this. I'm with you on this. I think, yeah, I, I think the twist is going to start on the bench. Yeah, I have a feeling too. This wasn't a great game from this last game, and if you're looking at guys who were actually flowing and producing, and he wasn't one of them. He was, and it, there's kind of a confusion going on right now. There, I, that's what I'm seeing too. Um, and I think if you're looking to gel, who's been together longer, right? It, 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 I think we need Bogus back in the midfield. He just does so much. And that's the one guy I'm going to feature somebody really featured well against Minnesota. It was Bogus. He was everywhere trying to do everything. He was actually playing out of position a lot because he was making up for other players, not getting the job done. So put him back where he's natural, get the best out of him or is the best in, in the midfield. I'm with you. Tony, your thoughts on the midfield? What are you what are you looking at for this? Um, honestly, I think we run it back. Like I know the Altuesta is like not flowing with them, but it's just I feel like they have to figure it out. And it's one of those things that's like if anything, I take out Tillman just because of like the way Ilya plays a little bit is like similar to what Tillman plays. So it just sub him out for Bogush, who has a little bit faster. And LA doesn't have to move as not move as much, but run as much as he needs to sometimes. Well, I mean, if you do that, then a Twesta and Ilya can drop lower and you set up Bogus higher, right? As a guy to really feature as, as a conduit for your offense. And then you feature to another three. Um, so that might that makes a good sense too. Um, it could be an option. <laughs> we'll see on this one. It's it's again, if we look exactly the same as last game, I'm I'm Gonna, we, we won't, we can't, but at least in the midfield situation, we'll be a little surprised. Which brings us up top. This is going to be funny, too. We know Buanga is going to start. There's no question Buanga is out there. The other two, though, I think it's highly debatable. And I'll go to you, Tony, first. Who's up front with Buanga this game? Um, If Martinez is available to play and is healthy, because I know that was a concern going into the last game, I think Mar Martinez starts over Oliveira. Um, hot take. Or does. <laughs> I know that's what I say. Hot take. <laughs> Maybe Mueller starts. That would be a crazy story if that happened. I know, Almost. But, but just throwing a hot take out there because it's like we have to figure out something in the in the front line because no one's scoring since what the first game of the season. <laughs> Yeah, I, I'll throw out a name. What the heck happened to on hell? We're in a three game scoreless drought. Yeah, this young kid who's promising. He no was he was questionable Is last he questionable? game. He was questionable. Okay. He was questionable last so he game. He should be back this game, right? Hope, hopefully he was questionable with a um, abductor. So that's where I'm going to say tomorrow is when Ordaz plays against Argentina. Okay. Wow. Playing in Philadelphia. I can see the quick trip down. He will start, and then Mueller will come on at halftime. Ooh. Okay. Okay. Maybe. Maybe. 
Um, I mean, Boanga did something crazier to get back in the lineup. Y'all remember that what, last year. So we've seen some wild stuff. Now, I've had a flight back from Philadelphia. Where I didn't feel so hot afterward. They're all laughing at me because they know what happened there. Um, yeah, it's not that long of a flight. I got to be honest. It ain't that bad. It ain't that bad. It ain't that bad. Uh, it's going to be hard. Um, I, I do want to see the kids start, though, this game. Right, not be the super sub, but actually get to start this game, and 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 develop with the lineup as it forms up, right? Not just get running, thrown into the mix. Um, Oliveira, I mean, it wasn't a great game, man, the last time. But under the circumstances, I just don't, uh, I don't see him not playing in this game. I think he starts again too. I do. I think it's the midfield that I think we'll get more out of if we move Bogus back. Um, that's where I see it. Uh, yeah, uh, I think that's where we're at. It's a who, who's going to go with who comes in later. I can see Mueller coming in later. That's the guy that can come in as your super sub because it's, it's kind of a respect thing, right? The guys that have been there, you know, training and put in the work. Dewey. Do a five in the mid bogus loan up front. But have a more of a four two three one where you got Tillman, um, Ilya as defensive mids, then have the attacking mids of Martinez, Artwesta, and Bogus. I mean, it would be a dream, but does this team ever go out of this four three three? The most we've ever done is a five three two. What a whoa! I've never seen us overload a midfield ever when. We get overloaded all the time, and it drives me up a wall. Like you can't play that. Like you won't play that. But it, it's it's weird to me, right? Mm -hmm. That that we're so set that we can't even do anything with the lineup. It has to always be the same lineup. It's it's it throws me. And if it's been like that since season one, right? It's it's a philosophy thing. But when you hit a three game scoreless streak, you kind of have to go like, hey man shake it up right mm -hmm. how do you solve these things get a little weird <laughs> i'm with you i am with you i mean having bogus as your playmaker in that setup maybe a twist and 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 uh yeah Ilya staying kind of home controlling things that might not well, be bad bonga with a couple extra yards out on the out on the left no no, no. see i'll put bonga as a as a um as a blown as striker, a hold, as as the center, I mean, you could, you could. He's the money man, right? So, I we I, we could see that. Will we see that? I'm not betting on it. I'm not holding my breath. I don't see him getting funky with it, but that would be cool if they did. If they did something like that, I would be actually very impressed. Like, oh hey, look, they're they're really trying to like shake things up. And that's cool. I'm good. Take a take a risk. Do something. Tony. He's in there shaking his head like hell no. What do you think, man? Just, just do something at this point. Like, I don't know. Like, shake it up. What do we have to lose? The fourth really. in a row. <laughs> yeah, fourth in a row right now. It's just four, like... four games, no goals. I... Ah, uh, yeah. We're scoring this week, guys. I, I'll say that right now. We're not getting shut out in this game. Hell no. Yeah, We're going to get it. Are at, they going to score more than us? I can't say. I was catching up a bit of the defenders the other day, and on their episode, they had um, Scarfa saying to me, like 330 something minutes that we haven't scored a goal. Yeah, no, it's brutal. It's brutal. I, you know. Hey, are you gonna keep just pounding away at the same thing over and over and hoping for a different result? It's getting that vibe, man. I'm with you. It's getting that vibe. I I know I like to see something crazy out there. I do. Let's solve some problems. Not just hope it works itself out. Perform better. Well, yeah, perform better, but how about how about beat the other guy in their tactics? Right? Like, outsmart them. 
just don't don't out pummel them and outsmart them for something. Work around. So I'm with you, man. I'm with you. We gotta see it. Let's see what our faithful thing. There's about five comments I see on there. Let's see where they're at on this thing. All right, let's see who do we got. Who we got? Um, David did ask DP Veller no DP till summer. I just say no DP. Nah, yeah, we gotta move forward. Um <laughs> Wolf. Good evening, fam. Sorry to be back at BMO. I'm with you, man. We need to get back to home cooking. That that, that helps too. That definitely helps. Uh, Dave Gomez says, I think Bogush is better in mid as well. Dude, he, all season so far, he's really been the consistent performer for us. Realistically, it's the one guy I can feature in every match, even in a crappy snow game. Putting in the work, man. Doing the grinder stuff as well as the finesse stuff. Putting in the work and not, you know, being an asset the entire time he's out there. He has been that. So I'm with you, man. I'm with him in the midfield, too. I dig it. I see it. Don't be surprised if it happens. All right. Those are the comments that I see. Thank you guys for putting that out there. I know it's been a busy night for a lot of you guys. Um, thank you all again for for contributing every week. Keep it up, guys. We'll be back next week. You know how that's going to work. Um, all right. So I'll go to you, Tony. Thoughts? What do you need to see for us to win this game this weekend? Finish our opportunities. Pure simple. That's that's all. Like we have everything else that's doing decently well. Connect passes is another one. But when the opportunity presents itself, just put it in the back of the net and finish the opportunities. That's it. There you go. There you go. Uh, same same to you, Bam. You're thinking the same thing. Is it's the finishing side or just shake it off? Uh, what well, we would shake it off and score more goals than they do object of the game last time we checked yeah I, i'm open to interpretation on this thing i i want to see something different i do want to see bogus in the midfield too guys so there it is and let the kid let the kid cook up front man let's see what he can do with a full 90 60 if it gets funky but hey get in there and go from the start right what could go wrong what could go wrong so there we are all right, so you know what that means, guys. We are calling it. It's the final thought time. So I will throw this to Tony first. Your final thoughts, my friend. Um, final thoughts is, uh, you know, just have fun this weekend. It's going to be a rainy day. So, uh, well, it's supposed to rain midday. So be be wary of that. Uh, it should clear out by the time by game day standard. So we could have a wet pitch. Um. Drink responsibly, uh, responsible. Yeah, words are hard. Uh, and um, yeah, just make sure you look out for each other when you're out there. You know what I mean? You can never know what might happen. Just, just be be careful out there. And of course, as we, I always, when I started off, or I always transition when Bam hasn't spoke. What is? Do we always say Bam? Remember, it's okay to be okay. Look out for your mates. Phone call can save a life, you know, especially with what's happened this week where we're all remembering Mo or remembering Olaf and all that kind of stuff. Although it may not hit you as hard as other people around you, reach out to them, talk about them, keep their legacy going, talk about their life. Um, if you do get a chance, take a mate to a, to a football game that you haven't seen for a while. Take them out for a coffee in the morning take them out for a beer, go watch some of the March Madness, go watch the F1s this weekend, which which is in Melbourne. Um, do what you can. For me, for tonight, I'm going to try and head out to a local soccer match. It's the kickoff of the Victorian State League here for me, so I'm going to try and get to either a fifth or fourth division match, So which would be like the seventh or eighth tier here in Victoria. Um, just, yeah, reach out to your mates. Remember, it's okay, it's okay not to be okay. Phone calls can save a life. Get to the game and pray like I'll be doing, and I know a lot of people in the 3052 will be doing, to see Tony with that shirt on, because when that happens, you know we're winning. In the rain? What? Wow. Dig it. I'm with you. Tony is losing his shirt, which means LAC needs to do their job. There it is. All right. Love it, man. Um, 
yeah, I'm with 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 Bam. Check in with each other, right? Keep the network up. Talk, uh, communicate. It's important. Uh, this is also a holiday weekend for a lot of us, right? I mean, it, it, there's there's things coming up, so check in with your family, right? Check in with your friends. Make sure everybody's on the right side of things. Um, and it never hurts to talk. It never hurts to talk. So I'm with you on that. Um, and again, dedicate this to our brothers that we've lost. Uh, that's for sure. Love you, Olaf. Love you, Mo. Miss you guys. Um, and beyond grateful for all that you two have done for me um, and many of us always being there. So um, I will say this and the kind of inspiration I got from, from Olaf all the way back then. Um, as the LASC faith lover, he used to, he would tell us multiple times, like, be yourselves. Do you. Don't try to be like another group. Don't try to be like other other clubs. Just do you. Um, be comfortable in what you do. Be the North End. You've got the capabilities to be bigger than anything else that's ever been um, in terms of the culture in this country. Just keep pushing. And that's what we got to do this weekend. Keep on pushing. Let's get that win. Um, let's sing our hearts out. And hopefully we'll be celebrating after the 90 minutes. And I'll leave it at that. Final word, Tony. Stay golden, Los Angeles. Bam. Stay golden. And for me to to all of you, stay golden, Los Angeles. Thank you for listening to the Heart of LAFC. Make sure to leave us a rating and review on iTunes or Stitcher. Shoulder to shoulder, the black and gold is taking over. <laughs>